Welcome back. Birds of a Feather, Code Edition. We are back. And Eddie is oh, yeah. back. What up? But I want to go back. <laughs> yes. He was away enjoying a friend's marriage, uh, being held down in uh what? Cancun, right? In Cancun, yeah, Rivera Maya, Cancun, yeah. Yeah. So anybody on my page saw me post that picture of Eddie chilling in his mint top. He was definitely <laughs> feeling himself out there smoking a cigar with his bowls. Um, yeah, feels good. <laughs> yeah. So Eddie, what is it like coming back home after being there? <laughs> uh today. Uh work well today, <laughs> yesterday was fine, but today with work was like was so much that I'm still playing catch up. I'm still not caught up yet. Gotcha. Um, stuff. And I was only out for three days technically, yeah. You know, so <laughs> look, one day, one business day too many these days, especially in jobs where you're in charge, you know. I gotta go through all my emails, make sure I miss nothing. Look, and I come, of course, I come back to problems too. But well, that people were stalking you. Well, we ain't gonna get to that anyway. Yeah, we can, let's just yeah. talk about <laughs> Eddie's back. So, welcome back to another edition of Co ed, edition of Birds of a Feather. We got to talk draft before we talk about now. We are actually in a game six, but we're gonna talk about that later because Lord knows I didn't expect to be here, but I ain't gonna go in on that just yet. Eddie, when you got home, or even when I'm sure you were checking for occasionally, because I know how, you know, even after we did our little brief live on the Friday night or Thursday night before, yeah, the they NFL draft went pretty darn well for us Eagle fans. How did you Oh, feel? yeah. It went it went great. I thought how we did a did a good job. He addressed the needs that we had to address. Yeah. You know. Only I didn't see was a tight end, but the guy we got, uh one of the guys we got is a big wide receiver, so you can probably convert him, maybe. Yeah. He's a big bird. I feel like um a lot of these players, well, I'll tell you one thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm always glad when we grab an FSU player because we don't we always seem to do well with FSU players. So I'm glad we grabbed um <clears throat> what is his name? Oh, uh, you're talking so, about uh not Will Shipley. He he's the running back. That's Clemson. We got two Clemson. About, uh, you're talking about Johnny, Johnny Wilson. Johnny Wilson, yes. We got yeah. he's a very tall guy. They could use him for special teams yeah, for yeah, he's like a, six, a slot. Six, yeah, he's very tall. Six, six wide receiver. Yeah. Yeah. So that was good. Um obviously now we <laughs> I'm having a time with this dude's name. Is it Jay Licks Hunt, the linebacker or outside line? What is he? From Houston um, Christian. He was kind of unknown. No one really knew yeah, much Jay about Lix, him. Yeah. Jay Licks Hunt, yeah. Jay Licks Hunt. Um, what were your thoughts what on him? Because a lot of people were kind of like, huh? When when that I, I like it. he's he he's very athletic and he's a raw talent. I mean he, he's a project. I mean the good thing is he's not going to start. He's going to be in a rotation, so I mean, he'll have time. You think, I think he'll teams? be like I think he'll be like a BG. Like he'll it'll take him like a year to a few to get himself going. You know, but I don't think he'll. I mean, I don't think it's going to take. It won't take. I don't think it'll take like four years for him to get going. It'll take like maybe one or two, but. Okay. They, they say he's pretty uh, athletic and. Yeah, because apparently, uh, how he was sold on the re- what you just said that he was athletic because a lot of people were like, I guess because he's for not from a big school, he's from Houston Christ- Christian. So, I assume that's why everybody was kind of going, "What?" Like some people were kind of thinking you should have yeah. got um, another player there. Yeah, but for that, this guy in the third round, I'm okay with you know. And a lot of people complaining about like, oh well. Why don't we go with uh, the guy from Alabama as the first pick? And I'm like, that doesn't matter. Like, who cares if he went to a small school? Like, it, it wasn't that small school. I mean, he still played other athletes that are competing at a good level. So, and yeah, I mean, our, our first round pick was, uh, even if they say he didn't compete against everybody, he was pretty much the number one defensive uh, oh. as far as tackles and interceptions in his school at Toledo. So, Four hundred and something um, snaps with zero touchdowns. I mean, yeah, Qu- Qu- Quinion Mitchell was the first round, as we know. Um, I thought he was a smart pick. Uh, I think we were both yeah. kind of like shocked at how chill he was until he got into the fans on the ground, and then you were like, "Oh, there it is." <laughs> yeah, he, I think everybody was thinking play. he wasn't happy, but he was just trying to keep cool. I, I, I don't think he thought he was going to go first before to be the first defensive uh, back to really go. You know, I think when he went, he just was like, "Oh." Just, yeah, I, I think also too. I told you I thought he was tired because he because we saw mostly what was going first was the quarterbacks and the um uh what wide receivers were going. There were a lot of running backs and wide mm-hmm. receivers that went early. Yeah, uh, defensive players didn't get picked to what fifteen till like fifteen or sixteen, right? So that's yeah, what they were so, saying. Like for us to go to get most of the guys that people projected that we would get that how he actually ended up selecting is shocking. Yeah, 
And and the part that I love about that, we didn't have to move to get him. No, we didn't. Nope. Stayed right where we were. It worked right out. There's some there was a because it was like run on quarterbacks and it was like just yep. then it was a run on guards and then it was like, is uh what's going on here? And then yeah, I think everybody thought it was weird that a lot of quarterbacks were going that quickly. Yeah, um, but this guy he he's uh he looked great at his pro day. I mean he in the pro pro game he was taking on all these big name wide receivers that got drafted. And he was shutting them, and he was doing his job. So I uh, understand what people were like, "Oh, he goes to Toledo." You know, Graham yeah. Hunt went to Toledo. You know, like, yeah, he went to, so what? He had a chance. He said to go somewhere bigger. He chose to stay and be loyal. Yeah. And that's that's yeah. honorable. Yeah. He's, um, a humble, he's a humble kid, from what, I, from what I hear. Sounds like he seems like it though. But I like how the more he, his personality came out, the more they he was showing like. They did a few different things with the draft this year. Like they let people have video calls that that looked like they put them on the bean, big screen so that players could like they thought it was something recorded and it really was actually a live like almost yeah. like a hologram kind of like thing where where the family or, or friends could like get first dibs talking to their to their draftees. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. That was an exciting. And they did the hologram thing with um Caleb Williams, uh, where he got to hologram himself to his school or something. Like they were able to wave to him from like they created this hologram image of him like he was looking at a video camera and it came up as a hologram to his mm. school, which i thought was pretty different i was oh, like that's, that's really cool. crazy but uh that's about probably as ai as they got during the draft mm. um we got anaya smith in the fifth round from texas a&m um that's a pretty good pick uh well, let's not forget uh cooper Oh, I was getting there first because I was trying to warm up to the people I had scrolling up here. But obviously, Cooper DeGene was obviously everybody's huge, huge get. Um, I say he looked 12 years old, but we'll see what happens. Because oh, he, he looks like a little kid, literally. <laughs> he looks like a little kid. I mean, I, mean, I told you uh, okay. when you when you were gone, when they picked him, my first thought was he looks like Kyle Rittenhouse, the protest killer. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to tweet it, but I did because everybody was like, yo, <laughs> and I was like, sorry. <laughs> he reminds me of the protest killer kid that was on trial that cried his way through, you know, acquittal or whatever. Yeah, but, he looked like a nicer version of that kid. Yeah. Uh, obviously a nicer version. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, but I'm sorry. That was the first thing I thought when I looked at him. I said he was kind of like a serial killer, but you know, whatever. Um, he may shut me up. Uh he seems yeah, very yeah, confident. He's excited. For his age. See his he's video? Very excited. Yeah. He was videoed when he came here. He already got the little hat sitting sitting just right. I think he's already got swag. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, he gonna be like Reed hanging out dancing with all. The other... <laughs> first of all, first of all, him. So there's so many names about what him and Reed are gonna be named now. Like, can I just tell you? I wish I could run through them, but of course I can't find it at the moment. But you know, Twitter likes to create duos and nicknames well, for some of these players. Well, I like his nickname though. I like think Cooper DeJohn. They call him the John. <laughs> so yes, Gail from Fourth and John swears that he thought of that first, and then the Eagles tweeted out. So Gail would like to get his respect of first dibs calling that name before they decided to tweet it out. So somebody was watching the Fourth and Live uh, John. Shout out to Gail. I'm gonna give him that credit because he did yeah. come up that first, as he should being on Fourth and John. But anyway, I thought it was cool. There were so many Batman Robin kind of like duos. Like they were calling them. There was any, there was any kind of play over the milk you know aspect that they're two white dbs you know double milk 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 thirsty like there was just so <laughs> many names people were coming up with so you're gonna hear it if you're on social media they're gonna try to come up with ways especially if him and reed have a successful uh first run uh together um we know that slay is an excited vet um bringing some guys that actually want to tackle <laughs> which will be very exciting um yeah. But what else? What else uh, uh, grabbed you with this draft? Because you know a lot uh, of stuff seemed to happen in the late, in the later rounds more than. Uh, yeah, I mean, I thought it was a good move picking round. up two picking up two guards. Yes. Uh, a center and a guard. I mean. Yes, the center. Yes, yeah, that's good. important. Yeah. Yep, the backup. And these center. are guys, and these are guys that they can learn. They can go learn under uh, under Stoutland. So. Yep. Get these boys in Stoutland, you, and they'll be set. You know. <laughs> yeah, that Michigan dude is huge. That we got. Oh yeah, that's big. Something. Jesus, <laughs> when I saw him, I was like, "Holy crap!" Yeah, I mean, I feel like they hit every school. I mean, and obviously we got to talk about Trotter's son. Oh yeah, um, where mean, no, nobody thought at first that was going to happen, but it it came very late. 
I don't um, mind him. I, I don't mind him at that pick. Right. At all. Some people thought I it did, was too low, but no, I thought I thought if he went any higher than that, I wouldn't have wanted. I, I wouldn't want him higher because I honestly I think because he's not his dad. He, he's got he's got to grow a little bit. I think yeah. He needs to, He's not that imposing like linebacker like his dad was, but I think he needs to like put some weight on and get bigger. Yeah, he does. But I, I, I think that that was a that was a great sentimental choice. I'm glad that he was even there by the time it, it came to that time, because that could have easily been a miss. I love that phone call. Did you hear it? Yeah, it was emotional. He was like, hey, man. Yeah. And he was like, and then Lori gets on the phone. He's like, remember last time I saw you? He's like, when last yeah, uh, he was like he, two, three. <laughs> he's, he's walking around the stadium and he's like two years old. I was like, yeah, oh, that, that's cool. When they show the helmet on him as a little kid, it made me think of, you know, we were talking about Saquon's son wearing his little helmet. It's so cute. But um, that was that was definitely one of those moments everybody kept retweeting because it was such a beautiful moment. Who was the, Trotter, who, who was the was player? Happy. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Trout was so happy, though. You see his text, he is, he his was. tweet, his stuff he put out. He's like, my boy ain't going nowhere. He ain't got to pay no rent. You stay home. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I felt emotional too because knowing that Trotter had lost his wife a couple of years ago to cancer. It's like, yeah, he and Lori told him that. He said, oh, "I loved your mother." Really. I was like, "Oh man." I know <laughs> that's hard. That's hard. I mean, she's as you all know, as everybody knows that it's like that's one of the things too that was bittersweet is that you know she can't be there to see him get drafted, but you yeah. know that he. I'm glad that he instantly. Uh, defended himself saying I am not trying to be my dad you know what I mean you know like he knows I'm gonna play the best of my ability yeah mm -hmm. so that's good um how about the shout outs like the fact that uh Jordan Milata was the one to deliver the message and from oh Australia yeah it was hilarious he yeah. said hi Uncle Roger <laughs> <laughs> that was funny and yeah, then, that was, and that then was BG cool. BG coming out saying hey Dallas sucks all day <laughs> All day. I, like, <laughs> I love that Brandon came out. He was well, you know, well, you know, B, you know, BG is the ultimate troll. So he will clearly BG was hype. He will he will go after you like talk so much shit. So he 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 knew from the minute he got because when they had everybody come out, you knew he was he knew it was going to be Dijon because when he came out, he was already he couldn't even stand still. Homie was hype before he even announced the selection. Um. They had some issues too, and I don't know, you probably weren't watching at all, but when they would announce people from when they were trying to combine NFL Europe, uh -huh. can I just tell you how embarrassing it was when they were in Germany and that Wi-Fi was trash? Oh. <laughs> I felt so bad for the people trying to talk. And then they had a live band, so the guy didn't know the cue to start the band or stop playing the band. And then Yo, you, know, one, yeah. you know, they send different players there, like they had a player coming uh uh, a player from, uh, representing from NFL Africa. They had a player represented yeah. from NFL Mexico. They had mm -hmm. all these people, which was good, but it was just bad because you know that some people like the Wi-Fi ain't that strong. <laughs> like so, it was such an awkward moment. I wanted to be like, "Can we end this? Can y'all just yeah. read it?" Because <laughs> we embarrassed yeah. the poor people that can't afford that Wi-Fi. Oh, they went off the military base too. That was bad too. Yes. They, 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 it was all. It's kind of got the signal got kind of messed up. I know I had sent a. They tried though. I mean, they tried. It, it, I get it. They were trying to show how global it's <laughs> become, and that's wonderful. But you have to consider not everybody got that Wi-Fi strength. So, but um, and I think that's the only reason why some parts of the draft were awkward. But I mean, look, Detroit did pretty damn good. I, I'm I'm still I still think Philly is better, but obviously I'm biased. But Detroit did, did pretty good. Like seven hundred seventy seven hundred seventy thousand people rumored to have shown up for all three days. Oh, okay. So that was a big turnout considering um, I wasn't excited about Detroit. I was like, yo, why? But okay. I mean, they had Eminem come out with um, Barry Sanders at one point, you know, so yeah, they that, had that their, was, cool. that yeah. was very cool. Uh, a lot of people, a lot of analysts were very excited to meet him and take a picture with him. Um, but yeah, all in all, I thought we had a very A plus draft. I think that, like you said, the Eagles definitely fulfilled most of their needs for their future contracts. Um mm -hmm. I would yeah. hope that they're deep when it comes time to like substitute for injuries and or seeing a lot of talent come pre preseason because this is to me, I feel like this is even more exciting because you can see the shift because we see a lot of our veterans, you know, Jason Kelsey, um, BJ, will be, BG will be next, eventually Lane, like we know the shift is coming. So I just feel like mm -hmm. this generation of picks is more important than any other future. Well, future picks because they're going to really build the foundation for what we're expecting you know oh, for yeah, the next so, five years yeah so it's a changing of the guard i mean these guys are yeah. the young guys are going to step in the team is 
getting younger and that's yep this and is that requires gonna happen. patience <laughs> yeah it does it requires patience because some of these and some of these dudes i wouldn't be shocked if they start this year actually if they get a little shine this year yeah but, and um, some of these guys can contribute on special teams like yeah yeah you were saying a, that. yeah cooper jean's a great uh punt returner that okay it was it was him yeah. I, I could i i knew they had brought up punt return and i said that's so important because now as we found out yesterday um boston scott is now a ram he he finally left uh left the yeah, and i kind of saw that coming with the signing of shipley yeah they, they, shipley they yeah him, coming shipley from clemson the yep. spot. yeah yeah because yeah. how long are you going to ask him to take like barely a thousand <laughs> barely a million dollars every year like it's just kind of insulting after a while yeah, especially when he's a giant I'm killer glad. Yeah, I'm glad he got his money. Let him get his money. I'm glad he is. I'm, Cause look, cause I'm always happy for him. Yeah, because you know the shelf life on running backs is not that long. So I, I kind of want him to get get what he can while he can, you yeah. know? Honestly, Boston has held up pretty damn well considering, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, even when he's been injured, it's not like he's out too long. I mean, he always oh, we don't use him to fill in. Yeah, he doesn't get a lot of tread on his tires for us. Because That's what I'm saying. So he can, he can afford to not be banged up too much. And even when he was, like – you know, they just didn't use the running game that that time, or they just went back mm-hmm. to the original option. But I think so. Obviously, with Saquon this year, this is going to be something that it would be important for someone like Boston Scott to think about his future, knowing that most yeah. of the time they're going to be running through Saquon. So and, I wouldn't want to sit there and watch either. <laughs> yeah, and if these work out, if these picks work out, we're going to be looking at being uh, having a very solid team for the next like years. We have because most of our core. <laughs> like our core offensive, like our offense, mm-hmm. he's got us down to 28, 29. Yeah, I mean, we locked up AJ, they got Devonta. Yeah, AJ's not going, so nowhere. yeah, not going nowhere. Yep, yep. Uh, Dickerson's not, Land is not going anywhere. Um, a lot of yeah, like, all the these first. guys that are like, and Saquon is here until what 27? Yeah, I, I think, think before 28, I think he is 27. Yeah, because yeah. it wasn't like it wasn't like a big, big contract, but it was enough. Yeah, it was like three years because I think, well, I think three years optional. A, I think he has a fourth year option, doesn't he? Third or fourth. I, think, I can't remember his yeah. third or fourth year is optional, but I know after two years he has a Yeah, I mean, no, if, and if he does well, they'll restructure him and keep him around. I mean. Look, as much as that boy prides himself on on conditioning himself, I mean, knowing that they're always already showing him uh, right now this month, constantly training with, with Jalen in different locations. You know, he's already ready to actually be on a team that actually wants to work. Like, at this yeah. point, I think he's mentally already there. So, I think... Yeah, but, <clears throat> yeah. I'm I sick of these people talking there. about, oh, he always gets hurt so much. I'm like, um, you try to go out playing against these guys. You... Me and you sit on the couch, like... And what the fuck are you... Like, what are you and saying? you have to realize what kind of line he was behind, too. You have to consider... Oh, my God. The, the, the Giants weren't always reliable the getting, watching his blocks for him. You know what I mean? So... They thought hey, look, he could do everything because he's like a little he man, but he shouldn't have to. He's a running back. Yeah, I mean, we kept look how we we kept we kept Swift healthy, and, and everybody said swore he was made of glass. That's and why I was kind of disappointed that we didn't keep him. But I get it. I mean, I get long term why we didn't keep him. But Swift proved everybody wrong. I thought he was pretty damn healthy for being over a thousand yards. You know, for one mm-hmm. year, I thought that was a pretty good investment. And um, I'm kind of sad he didn't stay. But size wise, Saquon is obviously what we what we want, what we need. And what we um, haven't had in a while either. We haven't had exactly. a guy that big. <laughs> I mean, to me, honestly, I always I know I always skip over Shady, but I always go back to Westbrook being that one reliable multi threat as a running back. Well, um, don't forget that Shady was had the most yards in the Eagles history. No, he does in terms yeah. of yardage, but I just always think of when I when I think about a multi talented running back, I always think of Westbrook because Westbrook never had issues holding the ball. Um, if he did fumble, it was like just a fluke thing. Um, Mm -hmm. he just always knew where to be you know what I mean I just always felt like he was more of a utility guy whereas obviously Shady got the yardage but we all know Shady had was kind of reckless with holding that ball yes he was our most yeah but it was hard to hit him though too so that's the one thing he was true I don't know I guess my mind just goes back to Westbrook because I always feel like Westbrook was always very reliable and I don't think we had to worry about him on any level for the most part. I mean, he may have been obviously slower because that's going to always happen generation to generation. You're not going to be as fast as the next guy. Mm-hmm. But when well, it was him and, and Buck Halter and Deuce, remember the triple triple? Oh uh, yeah, that was that was. A good I time. missed that. I missed the I missed, triple. I, 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 what was I, I, it I missed Buck Halter. What was it? The triple headed monster. It's called three headed monster. Yeah, three headed monster. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I miss those days. But anyway, no shout out to Shady because him and by the way, him and Deshaun have a podcast. I haven't watched hardly any of it, but I've seen enough clips to be like, I couldn't even stay on that too long because I know they just be clowning each other, <laughs> talking yes, in code. Some some yeah. of the stories you could tell they be talk they be talking <laughs> code and I'd be like I don't even know what that means so I can't <laughs> I'm sorry yeah, I, I, ain't I, I have to check thing. I have to check it out I still watch uh, of course I I check I like to check out his clips on Speak with him and like yeah uh, of course yeah no because they you know, I only watch you know, him enjoy <laughs> you know, yeah you know how I feel about uh, their counterpart so the yeah, other kind of yeah who I don't so. like who I don't like so nobody does <laughs> I think everybody can't stand him that's why I said I feel bad for Joy and uh, Shady but um. Anyway, so moving on. All right, so we know what's happening. First of all, I didn't realize the game was at nine o'clock until someone tweeted it. I thought this bitch was no. Like, was I was like, start I don't at seven. Stay up that late. No one does. <laughs> we didn't expect to be here, and they already, yeah. you know, they're already been talking throughout yeah. uh, most of the radio show. Like, there's still New York fans on their way here. Like, it's not like they're not going to stay away, regardless of how many tickets were bought by the front mm. office. But um, this game is not just to me on Embiid anymore. This game is on yeah. Maxi. is need, on the bench. We need the bench to, to Tobias. We need everybody to be as consistent as they possibly can, even if it is only in the fourth quarter, <laughs> because mm-hmm. that's when it means the most. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I really don't feel like at this point the pressure should be on Embiid anymore. He's already been in this yeah. position several times. He can only do so and much. The guy, and the guy is playing his heart out with like and he's ha- half his face is frozen. He's yeah, dragging he, a bum leg like y'all got to back off now. Yeah, like, I'm tired yeah, of being yeah. mad about him being. Yeah, cut him a yeah, cut him a break, man. <laughs> I'm saying like he's done what he could. Like he got his first seventy point game this season. Damn, like can we just be a little a grateful? Yeah. Like you know, it's a hard thing to stay healthy for eighty two games, especially when he's been gone for like thirty five of them. <laughs> and I sound like a broken record when I say this all the time, but we need to buy us to earn his paycheck. Well, he he's got to earn his paycheck. The little that he did come through with that last game, I was happy to see him snap back into it because where he seems to fade to black, there was a moment of desperation, which I'm sure between Maxi and the bench realized like we got to get it together, like mm-hmm. this is do or die. And Maxi said that when he got down, that Buddy Hill was the one in his ear. And now you know Buddy Hill ain't done shit for this series. But I'm and sure sometimes you still hear hear somebody say something to you, right? Right, it's at the right time. That's what I'm saying. Like to hear somebody was giving Maxi the nudge, knowing that Maxi was yeah. the firecracker, and if he is losing steam, like it's like, what the hell are we gonna do? Yeah. Um, but it's people don't realize like these types of games are only, and I'm not gonna act like I wasn't negative, Nancy, and I'm still kind of nervous because I will be having wine while I'm watching this. <laughs> um, but I just feel like there are times that it. I wish they would make like games two and three a little easier on themselves because I feel mm-hmm. like they could have even came back even after game two and just won three just because. And I feel like being down it. three and one said a, said a lot, you know? I still say it. We had that game one. They should have gave us our time out. Well, and, you know, mm. that kind of game, it's like after the fact, don't mean crap. But, yes, they also, I yeah. agree, should have had the lead that it didn't have to lead to that. But, yeah, you know, that's why game that five was important. Well. Yeah. 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 Game five was – game five was – building on game one almost being ripped away from them again like if they yeah. had really fought that's what a game one would have ended up in i just did I, 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 for the life of me i just don't get how they only scored 92 points in that game you know and i'm like that just means that just means they got nothing out of anybody else on that team no because all they needed yeah. was just some some threes to land and some like they needed anybody, to fight for under the basket anybody could have got Anybody. Two more points, three more points somewhere. It'll you give Cam like two more threes in there or Batum to hit. That yeah. could have easily taken care of that last minute gap. Mm-hmm. And and I'm telling you, everyone knows when that crunch time is when you got to watch that foul in. And that always seems to happen at the wrong damn time. You know, um, the thing I noticed about this last game was that not only just because of when it went to overtime, that game shouldn't have went to overtime if the Knicks hadn't lost steam. Mm-hmm. You know, Big Head Brunson was losing steam. Okay, that's the only reason why they ended up in overtime. Big Head, I'm gonna keep calling him that because he has a big head. Big Head Brunson was getting tired. He was fumbling when he started turning shit over. That's when you knew the game was about to go different. Because yeah, no offense, but I we get see. used to Embiid when he's fumbling because he's be losing his mind sometimes. He's just getting tired. But the yeah. fatigue really hit the Knicks, and that's the only reason why that game went to overtime because they started losing steam. And I'm mad that I did miss like a good chunk. I missed a good chunk of it because I didn't get home until like it was going in OT. 
Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I was working out and I had it on, but I didn't really see the last quarter until I got out the shower and, and dressed and I sat and watched it and I was ready to be like, just get it over with. It's a, like I'm hearing the taps music in my back of my mind going. Nah, 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 nah. And then I look up and then I'm like, no, these motherfuckers ain't trying to fight. How are they going to fight now? You know what I mean? Like part of me was like, no, 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 don't start. And then it, then Maxie grabbed me with that three pointer. And then I was like, come on. And then I'm like, oh God, I'm back in. Damn it. I didn't want to be back in. I'm invested. And just like that, she keep pulling just me like back. Like that. I, that the first thing I tweeted, I said, <laughs> I tweeted in caps too before I went to bed. I was like, and just like that, we back in this shit. <laughs> and yep. I didn't want to give a crap about this team. <laughs> I wanted them to go the fuck home. Yeah. And they sucked me back in because Maxie said, I ain't going home. I ain't going home. And then they said, apparently, uh, Tracy Morgan uh, gave him the bird. And uh, yeah. I cracked up because I'm like, Maxie's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw, I saw that that clip. He sees a little, his little ass in the corner. Him and John Stewart and Ben Still are all sitting there going, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, your team is coughing it up. What are we supposed to do? You know, well, they ben expect Stewart us to roll over. Man. Why is Ben Sir all of a sudden acting like he's a Knicks fan? Oh, come on. Let me just tell you how every podcast is being like, I love how they, Tyrone be getting to everybody. He'd be like, we know you're a fan just because it's it's popular now. The only lifelong <laughs> fan is Spike. Nobody else shows up that much on the game for the freaking Knicks. Yeah. You know? Well, but, his dad was a Knicks fan, but they but he yeah, his dad stopped peace. being one for a long time too. But as he should, because we know until this, until this what? Even after what's his name just went to surgery. Well, who was the guy that just got surgery? That oh, um, you know what I'm talking about. You talking about uh, oh god, you talking about uh, Jay Jalen um, shit. I forgot his name too because he's friends with Maul from Rory and Maul, and he said that yeah, he had show, show surgery. Because he's been out for it. He's been out for. He's minute. been out for a minute, and I was starting yeah. to wonder if maybe he was the problem because I was thinking maybe they're not gelling, especially once they got Jalen Hart yeah. and and uh, Dante. Somebody mentioned the fact that uh, that he was a, a bit of a ball hog too. So yeah, so that's a who problem. knows? Like honestly, who knows what would happen if he's in the game because he they say he takes a lot of unnecessary shots. And that's and but, that's why I'm thinking why the pressure became shifting to Brunson. But I don't even think Brunson in the beginning of the series was really showing out like Hart and and Divincenzo was personally, and mm. obviously their bench guy uh, Deuce uh, Miles. Until he yeah. started showing off coming off from the bench, I really don't think Jalen was consistent. You know, I felt like he was showing his ass more in game five than any of the other games as far as consistently. All the guys can hit. That's the difference between them and the Sixers, though. Let's be real. The Knicks can hit consistently as opposed to the Sixers. This has always been their downfall through this whole series is shot selection and consistency. Yeah. So let's just hope tonight they don't have our asses up seeing another flat performance um, in regulation that ends in a stupid call. Like, let's just hope that these sixes are ready to play two more games and just end this. Yeah. yeah you're talking, we're talking about Julius Randall. That's what I'm <laughs> Randall, Julius yeah. Randall. Yeah. You were getting close with the J. I didn't even remember the first name. Yeah. I just knew he's the guy that has been out for a while, but it's a good thing to consider. Cause after the season, if we do eliminate them, they got to consider what to do with Julius Randall. Like, is he going to retire or are they going to trade him? I heard there's a rumor yeah. Derek Booker now is thinking about going over there. I'm like, they don't want you book. Like, just keep your butt in Phoenix. Like, I don't think they need Devin Booker in New York. I really don't think he has – as much as I rooted for him hard two years ago because I wanted Phoenix to get – because they were getting close, I just feel like even with KD there, I don't think Devin Booker mm-hmm. is, is a winner. I really don't. And I feel bad for him because he was almost as close – people kept saying, why hasn't he ever been MVP? And then I'm thinking – I used to think it was because who he's surrounded by, but I'm starting to think it's just Book. Like, I, I think Book has a certain ceiling, and he's hit it several times. And that's why he hasn't yeah. gone anywhere. And KD, sorry, I should have stayed a warrior. I don't really think he should have <laughs> even been on – you know what I'm saying? Because you see how he gets. Like, yeah. after every season, he's more like – well, you know, and then he ends up on another team. And I'm like, do you ever, are you loyal to anybody? Like, I feel like Katie is never loyal to anybody. No, but you know what? Honestly, why would he be, though? If, if teams I mean, aren't he only loyal won to, the ring with Golden State, so yeah. If, te- if teams aren't being loyal to him, then why why do it then, right? I, mean, I agree. That, I, I mean, yeah. I just, I think it's obvious, especially because it's it's still weird that Golden State is not in the playoffs or the Lakers for that matter. I just really feel like well, at least the Lakers made it. At least the Lakers made it. True. This is facts. No, this is facts. 
<laughs> and we already talked about that because I still blame Draymond for that whole thing blowing up. But oh, Draymond, Draymond's a fucking excuse me. But no, uh, he's he is. No, I don't even want to talk. I don't even want to talk about him because you know we ain't gonna waste it because this podcast is about to wrap up anyway. But bottom line Horrible is tonight human. we expect Horrible a human being. Yeah, <laughs> he is. He is. He's just better off. Just take care of your cute kids. He got cute kids. Just be a dad. Um, like, oh, he's so nice. I'm like, stop that, nigga. Ain't nice. Stop. He's like, not. He's he's, he's he's uh. What's the word? Uh. He's hey, condemn. What's the word? Conde- condescending. Is not nice. I don't care. He's condescending. Said. Yes. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, look at him with his kids. Like, yeah, but then he's an asshole to the person. The next person he turns around and says hi to. I'm just saying, and that's why he got a podcast so he can try to prevent uh, show that he's a good guy. But it's like because well, he needs to do damage control because and, he's... bottom line, bottom yeah. line. And I feel bad for Curry and Clay because I think they secretly want to be like f you, man. But they they not man enough to say it. <laughs> they want to be like get the freak off of our team. You ruined us so bad. Um, but anyway, tonight is the night. So Eddie, we're just gonna close with saying Sixers right. and seven. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Give us a reason yes. to stay up, because if me or Eddie fall asleep, we want to wake up knowing that this team gave it their and all. If, and if I stay up and watch this and they lose, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be <laughs> mad, too, because we already mad this game is not coming on, like, in the next eight minutes. Like, why we have to wait tired. two hours for the inevitable? Because I'm going to be tired and, yes. and upset. <laughs> yes. And then you're mad because you know it's Friday and you got nothing to celebrate about now. <laughs> yeah, there you all go. All right. Well, birds of a feather, we will be back to discuss, I guess, what's coming up after this. What we got next? We're just going to talk more Phillies. Phillies are killing it. 20 wins. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, they're they having, wanna, They're shimmying they, they now when they celebrate. Because <laughs> what? They, are they coming home right now? Or do they play? Uh, you said it was a 10 not, game. Because they had a 10 LA. game. Uh, what's the name? Because they had uh, the Angels, which Angels, was a four game. They just finished, yeah. That was the four game set. They finished that. I think they are still they had to, a stretch away. Are they away. going to Giants? They put Giants. They have to be because if they're usually doing all the LA stretch, yeah, they didn't finish. So yeah, they're still out 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 west. Perfect timing because with the Sixers obviously going through this last stage, but you know how much you know how much of a mess it is down there when there's a yo (laughs) two games. I tell you, that's the one time. One time I'm thankful I don't work for the Link anymore because I hated this crossover time. It was nuts trying to get out of the city. Um, No, they're at home tomorrow. Huh? The home. The they're at home tomorrow. Versus the Giants? Yep. Okay. All right. Tomorrow usually, the Giants. Usually Tomorrow they have their Giants Mother's Day team. games at home, right? Usually Mother's Day they're home, I would yeah. say. All right, well, I either way. Play, I forgot they played the Padres. <laughs> they beat the they Padres, spanked, yeah, they beat their ass. They spanked them, too. Yeah, They spanked them. <laughs> that was a good series. All right, well, we're going to celebrate – Um. Speaking of which, we have to celebrate the fact that they celebrate now. Did you notice now they started the celebration with the shimmies to acknowledge? They used to do the thing where they would acknowledge they got the win or something like with their hands. Now that now the thing is the shimmy. It started with uh, Stubbs. Stubbs, oh, Stubbs has now had a celebration <laughs> dance floating throughout the clubhouse. So next time they uh, give okay. us home run, just watch Stubbs or watch who because now Vom is doing it, and I'm like, oh snap! They got a celebration dance. <laughs> and Cassie did the body roll in the field. So I was like, oh my no. God, here we go. <laughs> so hopefully this is a street. Nah, they've been playing. Uh, so I love watching them. I enjoy watching them right Salute. now. Let's keep but, the fire going. Dude, I'm sorry, but we got to get Sir. I don't know what's going on with Sir Anthony, but. Yeah, he's going to need prayer because he is not what he was when he first got to he's, the team. He's going to get know. sent down. He's he gonna, is. He's, they won't designate him because then they won't, because they don't want to lose him, but. Yeah, but he, uh, he got him. that Tommy John or whatever surgery, and that did not help him. He just restrained and, himself. And he's the one. He's the reason why we lost that one game on that home. Yeah, in that, in that yeah. Stand that, uh, so I mean, yeah, they were talking about him, and then also bigging up Johan because Johan, um, Johan is having a resurgence because you know for a while people thought Johan was going to be a problem, but mm-hmm. I think they want to give him a longer a longer leash because he's willing to learn, you know. Yeah, but Walker. we'll talk more Phillies next time, though, because we're about to cut off. But birds yeah. of a feather, we all going to be up with y'all tonight, too. So hopefully we'll be celebrating um, game six victory because Lord yeah. knows they're going to be loud tonight because of the last debacle over the weekend. So go Sixers. Mm-hmm. Go Maxi, Go Embiid. Oh, yeah. uh, for the love of Philly. For the love of God, win. <laughs> Bye, Eddie. We'll talk <laughs> soon. Peace out, y'all.